Hello? Hello. Sam was just showing me a really weird photo of something, so I was confused. What is that? It's the bug in the bird bath. That's right in the now. bird bath? I Get it the, out! I think the bird dropped it. I scared him. I scared oh. him. He left his lunch. He dropped his lunch in the bird bath. No! Hi, friends. We're here. I'm sorry I'm late, but we had very important appointment this morning is I got my wedding dress all fitted and the lady's going to tailor it up for me. Pick it up in two weeks. Woohoo! If it's so good. Hi Grizzle, hi guys. Welcome in, Bonkman, good to see you. Rook, my dude, pleasure as always. Uki, hi Shinvu, Damus. I think I got everyone. Yeah, don't kill it. Blathers wants it for the museum. Guten Tag. Hi, Hoju. Good to see you. Thomas, hi, hi. Is everyone doing good this morning slash afternoon? I am semi-caffeinated. We got Doggo in here. Hi. Can I have a kiss? No. She's like, I hate being picked up. You have to be nice. Ah! <laughs> She got me. And it is like a beautiful sunny day outside here today is, yeah, it is already 25 degrees Celsius here. So humid and hot. When you get to help Sammy pick out his wedding dress, heard he's been sunning his stems. Yeah, <laughs> a mini dress, if you will. Can't wait to see the pork carnitas. I got such an awesome recipe for it today. I tried to find the most authentic that I could. And I think this is the one that we're looking for. So it is posted there on the recipe command as well as in Discord. And so this is Tex-Mex food burritos. This is not, I don't think at least like a traditional Mexican food. Obviously, the ingredients are Mexican, but I think it does originate from Tex-Mex. You're back. Welcome back, Kev. The hair and beard length is just so handsome. I think that is my favorite Sammy look as well. He just looks so well put together. Woohoo! A 20 month or 23 month resub. Oh, we're almost at two years. Guys, that's my dad. What's up, Taz? Massive legend yourself. Okay, so let's learn a little bit about burritos first before we start. Then we will get our pork into the oven because it'll take a little bit to cook. We can get our beans cooking because we're making our own refried beans from scratch. It's not coming out of a can. You guys should already expect that by now anyways. Okay, so burrito is a dish in Mexican and Tex-Mex cuisine. Okay, so both. Consists of a flour tortilla. Try and find the biggest ones that you can. And we did, we got the XL. And we just went for the really nice, just plain white flour tortillas. Beautiful. Someone's gonna be like, Kate, you're not making your own? <laughs> I'm PTSD from yesterday's wrapping stream with our spring rolls. I didn't want to risk it and have our burrito tortillas just not work at all because, well, it's kind of the most important part is being able to wrap all of your ingredients up in a <laughs> perfect tortilla. So yes, not making the tortillas today. The tortilla is sometimes lightly grilled or steamed to soften it. I think we're gonna grill it today. We're gonna do it inside on our cast iron little grill pan on the stove top. I think that really helps uh, grilling, especially the seam side. It just keeps everything together. It kind of sews it shut. So don't skip the grilling part of the burrito. Plus it adds a little bit of extra flavor. Hi Vune, how are you? Good to see you. I'm still working on my coffee. Do 
Burritos can also be served wet. So uh, what that means is it can be covered in a spicy and savory kind of tomato sauce. And then that would be eaten with a fork and knife. I am not really a wet burrito person. I don't love like soggy, soft kind of textures. I'd rather have something like more dry and crunchy. Yeah. Sam's the same way. Everything went so good, Viun. Yeah, the fitting, it was so simple. I mean, I'm not even getting it hemmed yet because I'm not really wearing the dress this year, but yeah, it's all ready to go. <laughs> There's a Robin just standing right on top of the Mini Max right now. <laughs> The robins are pooping on the big green eggs. Hey. Kevin, you have a feeling myself, the hunger service and Josh Elkin are a few of your favorite cooks to watch aside from Gordon Ramsay and Guy Fieri. Oh, thank you so much. Wow. We're up there with Ramsay and Guy Fieri. That's amazing. I'm glad I can be that source of entertainment for you. Yeah. Hi, White Dove. Yeah, good morning. You like when burritos are golden brown? Me too. It's like your tortilla is a little bit like toasted up or grilled, but it's not falling apart. So burritos are filled with a savory filling, most often a meat such as chicken, beef, or pork, and often include a large array of other ingredients such as rice we're gonna make our own mexi rice today refried beans so i have some pinto beans that i put to soak this morning to make a little bit of refried beans from scratch never done that before vegetables so such as lettuce or tomatoes we're gonna do up a little bit of limed cabbage is my favorite find it just has a bit more crunch so i like purple cabbage for color too We'll mix that with some lime juice, some salt and pepper. That'll give us some crunch and like bright and acidity in there, especially to contrast all of the like heavy sauces like guacamole, sour cream, if you're gonna add cheese. A garden stream. I did not have that planned for today, but we can maybe do a little garden tour tomorrow again. Cause yeah, everything is popping up. It changes for sure weekly. Bebubs, welcome back. Yeah, pork carnitas, yum. Okay, so burritos are often contrasted with other similar dishes such as tacos, in which a small hand-sized tortilla is folded in half around the ingredients rather than wrapped and sealed, or also enchiladas, which use corn tortillas instead of flour tortillas. And then enchiladas are covered in a sauce and baked with cheese on top. Super yummy too. Okay, this is a fun one. So the word burrito means little donkey in Spanish. So being the diminutive form of burro, so that means donkey. And then the name as applied to the dish possibly derives from the tendency for burritos to contain a lot of different things similar to how a donkey would be able to carry a lot. <laughs> I love it. Welcome in cash money. You just made all of this yesterday? Yes, White Dove. Oh, Athletic, you missed the garden tour last time. Okay, well I have posted a couple of photos in Discord under the gardening section if you want like a little sneak peek. Okay, so the word burrito derives from donkeys. Interesting. So before the development of the modern burrito, the Mesoamerican peoples of Mexico used corn tortillas in 10,000 BC to wrap foods with fillings. And then historically, the Puebla people of the southwestern United States also made tortillas filled with beans and meat sauce and prepared much like the modern burrito. But these preparations could be said to be the origin of the simpler taco rather than the burrito. The precise origin of the burrito is not actually known. But in the 1895 dictionary, of Mesoamericans, the burrito or taco was identified as a regional item.
And then some have speculated that it may have originated with vaqueros. So those are the cowboys of northern Mexico in the 19th century, and then they brought that up to the States. Are we gonna fry the pork for carnitas like the traditional way? I will be going through the recipe right away here. I just kind of briefly went over it when I was looking at it the first time. So let's see. But I'm gonna say yes, because that is a traditional recipe. You have such a good recipe for refried beans, White Dove. Feel free to share it, yeah. Come hell or high water, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Okay, a little bit of interesting burrito history there. And this is definitely a dish that you can make your own, choose whatever ingredients that you like to eat, and then go from there. And then keep in mind, it doesn't have to be pork carnitas. You can do chicken, beef. I don't know, you can do fish too. Fried fish burritos are also delicious. Yeah, thank you for streaming stream elements. <laughs> okay, so this authentic carnitas recipe, it says this old school carnitas pork shoulder simmered with onion, garlic, bay leaf, and orange until falling apart tender and crispy. Excellent in burritos and tacos or even on its own. And it can be made in an instant pot or a slow cooker as well. So I'm gonna be doing it in the oven. But like it says, instant pot, slow cooker, you have many, many options here. Oh, lengua. Actually, I saw some beef tongues at the same spot where we got the Filipino fish yesterday. But they're pretty expensive. I think it was like $12 per beef tongue. And then by the time you like clean it all up and stuff, I didn't find that that was a very reasonable price. Not yet, but I'll watch. Maybe they'll go on sale. I would love to do some beef tongue tacos. So good. Don't give me that eye shot. Honestly, you would probably be fed beef tongue and be like, wow, this is like the best beef I've ever had and just like not even know it was from the tongue. And then when you're told about it, that'll ruin it for you. But it is some of the best meat on the cow is the tongue. Super fatty and tender, just falls apart and melts in your mouth. Okay. So the author of this recipe says, I have to confess something. Pork carnitas, Mexican braised and fried pork chunks with their addictively crispy edges were unfamiliar to me until I tried this recipe. Yes, Sammy? Our flights have officially been canceled for Hawaii. Our flights have officially been canceled for our honeymoon. <laughs> Great news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he just walked away so sad. <laughs> We're gonna have like a Jurassic Park honeymoon. Okay, carrying on. So carnitas were unfamiliar until we tried this recipe, which is weird because, well, if you love pork and you love Mexican food, this is like your starting point for sure. Pork carnitas. Okay, prep time, 20 minutes, real quick. Total cook time or total time, including prep time, will be about two hours. And this will just be dependent on how large or how small you cut your pork. So keep that one in mind. And then it says it serves eight. So let me just see. So four pounds of fatty pork shoulder. And I mean, making extras of this, there is nothing wrong with that. So I have 2.8 pounds. I'm probably just gonna roll with it and not try to cut anything back too much. Oh, you guys just canceled a week at Disney World for September. Sad times. Yeah. Yeah, don't feed you mystery meat. 
Do I eat hot dogs, fast food burgers? Yeah, tongue in cheek. <laughs> That's so true, right? Uki, hi, how are you? Thank you for the host. Oh, thanks, Vion. I didn't even see what happened there. Okay, so we need pork shoulder, water, onion. We need some orange. So this is the part where they're talking about frying. A quarter cup of lard, we do have that. You guys know I always save the rendered pork fat or beef fat. I know people are already canceling in se into September. That's nuts. As well as all those other ingredients, we need garlic, bay leaf, some sweetened condensed milk. That's like one of my favorite ingredients ever. Dried oregano and then just some salt. So what we're gonna do, place all of the ingredients in a large pot, six to seven quarts. Don't worry if everything is not completely submerged. Bring it to a boil, skimming any scum that collects on the surface. Reduce the heat to medium lowish. Simmer vigorously, stirring occasionally until the pork is fork tender and the liquid has completely evaporated. Oh, one and a half to two hours. Discard the orange pieces and the bay leaves. And then after that, we preheat the oven to 450 Fahrenheit. If your pot is an oven proof, transfer your pork to something that is. And then we let the pork fry uncovered in its own fat for about 20 minutes to crisp it up. It says no need to stir, serve it straight from the pot. Leftovers as if. Keeps in the fridge for up to three days. I would say up to a week, usually for cooked foods. That's coming from a chef. Hi Nike, how are you dude? Yeah, thanks for saving the fat. I got all sorts of good fats to choose from. 2020, the year that just wasn't. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, 2020, the year we can't even see yet. Where is it? Is it here? <laughs> I don't know if it's a year we want to forget, but it will be very memorable for sure. Okay, let's get started on the pork and then we'll get into our refried beans. And then we'll go from there. We'll start making all of the other condiments while everything's cooking up. <laughs> Vune, I can't wait to get blackout drunk again with my friends. Honestly, so like the way that our wedding is going, it's just gonna be a very large party next year is how we're doing it. Cause we wanted to keep our original date, but we're gonna observe everything with everyone the following year, massive party. Maybe it's for the better. Streaming it. Undecided yet. <laughs> Tex-Mex, it's going down. Yeah, just a quiet camera in the corner. I was thinking about it, believe me. Hi, Greek, hope you are well. Okay. Typically when I cook pork, especially when it's braised, I always use this pot. This is like my go-to pork pot. And then not sure if you guys were super observant yet today, but I did get the bone broth on last night as well. So stuffed, I think I have something like six carcasses of chicken in there. There's a couple duck carcasses as well. So I got that on overnight and this has been cooking away. And then this morning I added ginger, garlic, some fennel, coriander and black pepper to that super super good so I'm gonna let that go again overnight and then come tomorrow we'll strain it up together and yeah there might be some point today on stream that I just have like a little cup of broth because it's smelling so good oh you miss karaoke nights at the bar yeah and socializing with friends for the people that are really social i am sure you're missing all of that stuff but someone like me you guys probably can't tell but i am pretty much like an introvert i don't i'm not a super social person 
a lot of the other time when I'm not streaming. So for me, this is actually really nice. I love not being completely surrounded by people. We should stream it, Uki. It, it's probably going to happen because I know you guys would love to see that too. We've, we've had a lot of time together. I mean, a minimum of, usually of 12 hours a week. That adds up in a year. <laughs> yeah, Vyun. Yeah, no, I'm not going to stream the party. That's for sure. Not a chance. Yeah, we're living our best life. That's yeah, that's me too. I think Bonkman. That's why like I'm an introvert, but for like my extroverted self streaming and like sharing my life that way with you guys. That's how I have my social outlet. Okay, let's get into this. So as always, we use our pork collar, but a little bit contradictory there from where this piece of meat is coming from. <laughs> so the pork collar butt let's just pretend like the butt is not even on there i don't know why they've still kept that on there because it doesn't come from the butt yeah it's coming from the shoulder but more like up in this area i would say like where the collar is and then this is such a nice fatty piece of meat so a lot of you have said that you can't find this cut but it is very similar to a pork shoulder. So as long as you get something nice and fatty, that's what you want. Do not get pork loin for this, okay? Yeah, shoulder, so you can see our price. This is a bit of like the higher end shoulder, so it's $4.69 a pound. And that was the same piece of meat that we used for the pork ragu when we braised it. Butchering naming conventions. Yeah, always so confusing. I know. Okay, so we're going to cut this up. Cut into two inch pieces. And remember, I said the smaller you cut this, the quicker it will cook. But then keep in mind, the quicker that you cook this, kind of the less flavor you'll get as well. So the longer cook time, you'll always get more depth of flavor. So try not to rush this. But it probably isn't bad if you have to do it under pressure, like in an instant pot or a pressure cooker. Probably will still taste delicious. Just know it will taste better if we take a little bit longer to make it. And it's really interesting that we don't sear up the pork before we start cooking it is we just put everything together in the pot. Yeah, give the delicious fat time to render exactly. Come on out, little meat baby. Wrap that up. So far, it is looking quite tasty. Dry it off. <laughs> yeah. Another name for Nike, meat baby. Nice piece of pork, yeah. That side looks a little bit leaner, right? But the color as well of this pork, really nice and dark. And then the darker meat always has more flavor too. Bonkman's a meat popsicle. <laughs> okay, so first I'm gonna start by doing our two inch thick slices all the way down this way and then we'll come back and do some cubes very nice actually not as fatty as it typically is but that is okay we're adding lard anyways. 
The N is definitely more fatty if we look there. So good. Yeah, like this. Oh man. I just wanna slap that on the grill. Okay, now I'm gonna come back in here, cut it in half, and then come back this way and do our cube. So I think I'll do into three. You get like three or sorry, six, six pieces out of each of those slices. That'll be good. Really nice pork. Yeah, the one thing that the butcher shop said that they're having some issues getting in was, or like keeping in stock is stuff like beef chuck roast. Is really popular right now. Hey, Skos, good to see you. Yeah, season it. Just put it on the grill, I know. Tomorrow we're gonna have grill and stream. We got a whole piece, so like a whole strip loin, it was on sale, we got it for a really good price. So that's what we're gonna be cooking up for my mom and my grandma. It's steak night tomorrow. So we're gonna be cleaning the strip loin together and cutting our steaks together as well. So I'll show you guys how to do all of that. Should be a really fun one. Massive knife. Yeah, but it works so good for cutting meat. And this is what it's meant for. There's something to be said about having all the right tools for your job, I think. And that's why maybe I do make it look easy because I do have all these awesome tools to use, right? Research chef. Hey, Tash, good to see you. You think because people are stocking up on those particular cuts. Yeah, easy to freeze and keep for a while, totally. Yeah, it is huge. It's a scimitar. It's actually not like that big. You just picked up three pounds of chuck roast, yes. Okay, so since we are instructed to put everything into the pot, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna pop that into there. And then we'll start adding all of our other ingredients to that. And this is pretty much just enough for like one perfect little layer on the bottom of the Dutch oven. So that should cook really nice and evenly there. Wash up my hands. that and then I'll just start putting everything into there. Turn it on to a low heat, I think. Is that knife like six inches? No, it's, I would say the blade is probably a good 12 inches. And then this knife, I think is a eight, an eight or a nine. But some people like really long chef's knives, like, a 10 or 11 inch, I can't, I can't deal with all that. All right, so three cups of cold water. So kind of the same basis as making a stock is we're trying to take some of the impurities out. So we're gonna start with cold water, bring it up to a simmer, and then we're gonna skim all the stuff that comes out of that. So let's start with the water and then we can slice up an onion, get half an orange, put our lard into there, garlic, bay leaf, some oregano. Not a ton of ingredients to go into here. Let's put our water into there and then we can get it turned on. Gonna have 
have all sorts of stuff on the stove top today. Oh. And since I have a touch less of the meat, I'm just gonna put a little bit less water, like a half cup less. Because it said it's totally okay if not everything is completely submerged. All right, we have our white onion here. Grab the orange and the garlic from the fridge. Yeah, the knives for cutting fish. We are not doing homemade tortillas today. I, I guess I'll say I played it safe this stream and I just got really proper extra large flour burrito tortillas. <laughs> Giving me flashbacks to yesterday's spring roll rolling. <laughs> Garlic. Porking fat. That. And some orange. Let's turn that baby on. We'll go medium high heat. That's what it tells us to do. And then we can come over here, chop up our veggies. You didn't watch the vibe, but from my comments, it sounds like the lumpia was labor intensive, as you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, getting those wrappers to be the perfect consistency, I felt like I couldn't get them thin enough to be able to wrap it properly around without them splitting apart. It was a challenge, but a good one. And now I know the effort that it takes to make that. But I will say like the homemade wrapper tasted so good. And I didn't, like I didn't throw out the ones where the wrappers came apart. Like I'm still gonna eat that, reheat it. It's still gonna be good. It's gonna remind me just more of like a steamed dumpling. And don't ask me why this onion peel is like red. Don't ask me what happened there. I didn't grow this onion. If anyone knows why the onion peel is red, feel free to share. Yeah, that's why you cheat. Just get the store-bought ones. Yeah, now I know. I definitely nailed the flavor of the filling though. Yeah. Thomas Pita, thank you for the follow. Okay, so it says just to thinly slice the onion. So we'll do a julienne sort of deal here. See if I hold this up. So the onion has natural lines going this way. We want to cut it that way too. Hi, Cookie, welcome in. I hope you're having a good day. So I also like to follow the angle of the onion. So I always start with my knife like this. Then we go pop, 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 all the way around. And then once it starts to kind of want to fall over, just let it come back and finish off that bit. Do our other bit. I always find that the onion adds a really nice like sweetness to the dish. So you can pop that in there. Okay. 
And then it is important that you use a white onion for this too. That's what is primarily used in Mexican cuisine is the white onion rather than the yellow onions. Just a touch more mild. What's the trick for no cry onion cutting? I don't have any, honestly. Every onion cutting experience is different. Like this one, I would say white onions, definitely not nearly as strong as the yellow onion either. Uh, I've heard of popping it in the freezer. I've heard people say that having a dull knife will make it or make you cry more. There's a lot of different things and I don't think there's any one good way to protect yourself from crying while cutting onions. Unless you got goggles, I guess. <laughs> if you really want to go there. But typically I just like suck it up. It just makes you stronger. That's how you have to think of it. Okay, I'm gonna smash all of these. And then maybe we'll just slice the garlic cloves. Rather than mincing it. So smashing the garlic will help you peel the skin off a lot easier. Cut them under water? Okay, that sounds terrifying. How is that not slippery? Cutting onions under water. I actually love that method, but how would you do that safely? <laughs> oh, you read it somewhere. Nice. Yeah, who knows if it works, right? It's like you can read whatever you want on the internet. Whether it's legit or not. Maybe like, guys, should we just start <laughs> doing like really fun streams like that? Like let's test all of the different ways to try and cut an onion without crying. Still yeah. Okay, this way doesn't work. Let's try this way. <laughs> yeah, how do you breathe? <laughs> well, obviously you have a scuba diving suit on, Taz. Gosh. Yeah, wow. So simple, Kate. It's just the chef in me. No big deal, man. <laughs> We're built for problem solving. This garlic is super sticky. I'm trying to do the best that I can. Having a bit of issues here. Also, the cloves are like really small, so that does not help. Testing food life hacks, honestly, Uki. There we go. Just wash my hands. And then one thing that Hojerific was saying to me, she gave me a really awesome idea. So going off of the fish that I made for his request yesterday, it was like really labor intensive, right? He's like, what if like on those kinds of dishes, what if you make it traditional the first day and then the stream after you make it like with your own spin on it? I was like, that is really smart. And I think that would be a really great content to produce for you guys. Sounds, 
Sammy says he doesn't mind eating the same thing twice. You've noticed lately you must have some mild sensitive sensitivity to alliums. Whenever you cut them lately, you have a sneeze attack. Oh, but just once. Yeah, I wonder. You hate small garlic cloves? I know. It just takes forever to peel them and process them, Lilia. I think I hear some simmering back here. We'll have a check in a second here. And I mean, right away, I know one thing I would change with this recipe. How about instead of using water in the pork, why not use broth? So that's just starting to simmer. Just get a spoon and kind of mix that up a bit. Testing food gadgets, that would be a fun one too. Like I've always said, I wanna do the comparison to my stand mixer to a KitchenAid. I would like borrow my mom's maybe one day and do a side-by-side -side, like cookie baking test. Sam would be, I don't know. I guess I would sacrifice myself and be KitchenAid person. I'll let Sam be the incarcerum guy. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get the shorts out, totally. It is shorts and tank top weather on the west coast of Canada today, Greek. 25 Celsius already. Okay, I have my orange. I'm just gonna roll it to let the juice out. Cut it in half. It says all we need is the half of an orange. Really beautiful. So I'm gonna squeeze that. And then I think I'll cut it into four pieces after I squeeze the juice out. Just get in there. Cut it into four. And just distribute that around. Now you can spread out the orange flavor, right? And then what, we just need bay leaf. Really good flavor, yeah. This is quite popular in uh, Mexican cuisine is pairing the meats with citrus. And then that'll also help to break down some connective tissue and make it more tender as well. So really, really good on their part. Yeah, Greek, I was saying earlier that kind of have an itch to go down and jump into the river today. But I think the tide is too low that I'm probably just gonna be walking across instead. So one bay leaf, two bay leaf, Okay, we got our pork, water, onion, orange. Oh, the lard. A quarter cup of lard, or if you don't want to use lard, use vegetable oil. We got our garlic bay leaf. Oh, dried oregano. Okay, so lard and oregano and then some salt is what we need. Yeah, there we go, Bonkman. I am not so sure that it's a Mexican oregano but keep in mind that yes mexican oregano is stronger than your regular like north american oregano so if you can find mexican oregano go for it monster Vune, you are heading off well thank you for hanging out for the first little bit oh yeah i should still burn that sage stick that's right i hope you have a wonderful night and hopefully we'll catch you tomorrow Okay, so let's do like a tablespoon of oregano. Look at the water or like the liquid is already looking kind of milky in there. 
Yeah, cleanse the house. There's been some weird stuff happening. Who knows? <laughs> There's the lard. I was like, where did I put that lard? Remember to open the windows. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't set the smoke alarm off. Okay, so quarter cup of lard is all we need. This is what I'm taking out of. This is the oldest stuff I have in the fridge. I think this was what from when we cooked a pork belly. So put those two nubs in there. That was definitely more than a quarter cup, but I am not scared. And then our salt. So we can season the meat a little bit as it cooks. And I think I just want a little crack of pepper too. Something's telling me, Kate, put the pepper in. Shall we give this? A stir if we can. Mmm, it's smelling really good already. Yeah, such a simple dish. So now everything's kind of submerged. Definitely want to try and keep the bay leaves underneath everything so we can distribute the flavor properly. Okay, so now we are waiting for the scum to come out of the pork. I know it is like the worst word ever, but that's what we're waiting for. So some impurities should be drawn out once this comes up to more of a simmer like this, the meat foam that you see on the top. And then we just let that slowly simmer away on the stove top. Lavender, mugwort, rosemary are all great herbs too. <laughs> Thanks guys. Oh, the, the skim is already, or the scum's already starting. So all of that little foamy bits, that's what we're waiting for. And the pot is still on a medium high heat as well. Hey, Becca Bugs, how are you doing today? Start skimming that right away. We just come on the side and just get that into your spoon or ladle, whatever you're using. Obviously try to just get the scum, right? You wanna leave as much liquid in there as possible. Almost there. Can't wait to see how this turns out. This, I've been looking forward to this one as well as Sam for a while now. Been having a hankering for burritos. You can also use sound to cleanse. I've been doing that. So like the high frequency music and stuff like that. Thanks Becca. Yeah, everything is good here. The sun is shining, it feels like summer out, and that just makes me so happy. Okay, we got a little bit more here that built up. Come back in. And then we shouldn't get nearly as much stuff to skim off as if we were using pork that had bones in it. So there's not as much scum on something that's boneless.
we'll let a little bit more of that build up. Holy J. Cheers. How's it going, Jay McManus? We haven't seen you in forever. Salt apparently absorbs energy. What? So cool, guys. We're learning all sorts of stuff. Yeah, this is a big chug. Yeah, three whole bears? <laughs> Bang and the dirt is gone. What happened, Taz? What's going on over there? This should be kind of the last little skim. And then I'm gonna turn the burner down a bit. We wanna cook this a little bit lower and slower, and then it'll be more tender and juicy in the end. Yeah, boiling meat is usually not recommended. Okay, so we got Good little spoonful. So now turn that down to a low heat. Things are good. You've been taking care of your 85 year old granddad. Oh, well that's so nice of you. Not a lot of time for Twitch, but today is a chill day. Well, welcome in. That's good. Is it snowing on you, Taz? Is it supposed to snow places today? Okay, caffeination complete. Happy to say that. Now, bean time. Okay, we're almost at the simmer we're looking for and I see some more stuff to skim before we walk away. I am good with that. That looks happy. We got like our little pools of lard on the top. Good to go. Oh yeah, Becca, you guys are getting the polar vortex this weekend. And we have 25 Celsius today already. Okay. Our easy refried beans recipe. Bum ba da da, there you go. This is a first for me. Never made refried beans at home yet. Pinto beans make the best refried beans since they're so buttery. I didn't actually know that, but I'm happy that I did choose pinto beans. Fresh cilantro livens them up and then a squeeze of lime juice makes them taste more complex. Flavor aside, these refried beans are also a healthy source of plant-based protein and fiber. 12 grams of protein per serving, that's actually really good. So yeah, legumes are, are a good go-to if you are trying to cut back on your meat consumption. Bonus, this recipe is so easy to make. So she uses canned beans in this recipe. Yeah, baked beans with pintos. I usually do a mix of pintos and then the great white northern beans. And you have like a little bit of contrasting texture. Super good. So I opted for not canned beans today because I like to sh show you guys how to do every single step. So I soaked these this morning. I got up around 7 a.m. So these have been soaking uh, for eight, no, not eight hours. Like six hours already? 
just in cold water at room temperature. And then I'm gonna say when I added the water, the beans were probably at this level. So you can see how much they absorb. So really important. And then it's also said that soaking the beans will help you digest them better too. Because a lot of people have some issues digesting legumes. That's gonna help you when you soak them. So the step that I'm gonna take for our refried beans today, we're going to pressure cook these for the initial cook, and then we will simmer them with all the flavorings and spices. And then we'll mash them all up. Good to go. You're snacking on pita chips and hummus. Nice. I have some hummus in the fridge. Probably gonna finish that off this weekend with some veggies. Yeah, roasted garlic, of course. That's a good breakfast. Have, have I ever found a stone in the beans? Yeah, people always say go through your beans to ensure there aren't stones. Sometimes in beans, yes, but usually more in like lentils. You'll find little pebbles that are the size of the lentil and that can literally break your tooth. So yeah, any kind of dried legumes, it's always recommended to go through them when they're dried still and kind of pick through, find, Pick your rocks out. <laughs> you should start streaming your cooking, but not sure how. It is an interesting one to get into. It's a bit of an expense initially. And I would say only, only stream if you are like really into it, because it is a big commitment, especially streaming cooking. A lot of people don't know that. Okay, so some tips for our refried beans going forward. Chop our onions very small and be sure to cook them until they're tender. You guys know that we have no issue with this. We always like to cook our onions until they're like nice and caramelized, golden brown, because well, you get more flavor that way. Tweer do Carla. Thank you for the follow, welcome in. It says mash the beans as much as you like. So she usually stops when the beans are like half to three quarters mashed. So you can choose how much texture you wanna keep in your refried beans. You always cheat and use canned beans for your refried beans. Your son loves them. You never met a kid who likes them as much as he does. Well, that's awesome. That's definitely a good thing for him to love. There could be way worse dishes that he would want in his life, right? <laughs> Bonkman, yeah, I've heard some good advice for first time streamers. Don't quit your day job. Nope. Nope, definitely not. It took me two years of streaming, almost full time just to eliminate one day of working my full-time job a week. She also says that if you would rather use black beans, go for it. Just keep in mind that black beans are a little bit like more dry and lean compared to our more buttery pinto beans. So black beans are a little bit harder to blend up. We can also add some peppers in here for a little bit more flavor. Maybe we will do that. Cut up some poblano peppers. All right, so her aromatics that she uses, we are going to fry some onion and garlic together. And then our spices, for sure chili powder, cumin. Those are definitely Mexican flavors. And then some fresh cilantro chopped up, some lime juice at the end. It's easy enough, I think. Getting my pressure cooker down. Take a peek at this pork. Make sure it's simmering nicely still. And it is. It's like just, just submerged. All right. So pressure cookers and beans, I've done a little bit of research in the past and we are going to 
cook our pinto beans under pressure for, I'm gonna do half an hour because it's totally okay if they do start to fall apart a little bit. I think I'd rather have them overcooked in this sense than undercooked for sure, right? Because it's kind of a pain to release the pressure if it's not cooked enough. Okay, put the lid back up, bring up the pressure again. So let's go a little bit longer just to make sure we don't have to redo any steps. And then the soaking water, I actually like to strain that out because I find that it does have some impurities in there. You can't see it, but I think it is helping in some sense. So pour that out and then we'll put fresh water in with them. I need an instant pot. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't think I would use it enough. Like I love my little pressure cooker. I have a slow cooker. I have a pressure cooker. To me, that's like kind of all I need. I don't need everything all in one thing. I think it's too simple for me to use at home. Fresh water with the beans, yeah, yeah. Have I ever made those Brazilian cheese breads? No, but that sounds delicious. And also it's fun to say, Brazilian cheese bread. <laughs> you need tapioca flour, but you can only find cassava flour around you. Do you think it'll make a huge difference using the cassava? I think the tapioca starch is a little bit more glutinous, so maybe the cassava flour won't quite hold it together all the way. That's one tip I'm gonna say to you. If you have cornstarch or rice flour, that might be your better option. Just gonna kind of eyeball how much water in here. Usually go about like half an inch more water than the line of whatever you're cooking. Should be good. Okay, so now we're gonna put that on the stove top as well. I'm gonna cook them under high pressure. So this is what I do is, well, I don't start usually with the lid on. Why aren't you going on? There you go. So we will put the lid on. And then for me, I love the little like mirror aspect of this. So the highest pressure setting is the meat one. So this is like a little poultry symbol. So that's what we want. But I like to first get this simmering and then put the lid on it. You need a Gabagool stream? I am in. I've actually been thinking about having a pizza making stream soon. Now that the weather is starting to shape up more, let's throw that one in the mix. So I'm gonna put the bean pot on like a good medium high heat on the stove top there. Just put this over here too. Research chef, you add half a white onion and garlic to the beans while they cook. I think that we'll be adding enough flavoring after they're cooked that we don't really have to fool around with that just yet. You're gonna try Walmart tomorrow for tapioca. That was like my most professional <laughs> educated suggestion. Hopefully that helps you. Cassava has more thickening power, but it might not be as glutinous, right? Is it'll be more starchy, but it might also fall apart and not hold as much structure. That's my guess. I've also not worked much with cassava flour. Oh, 
Okay, so while we're waiting for our beans to come up, we can chop up some onion, get our garlic minced up, measure out our spices, chop up some cilantro, and get everything ready for the beans. And then I'm also gonna just make a little list of our other condiments to go into the burritos so that we don't forget anything. So there's like quite a bit. So our carnitas, I can check that one off right away. Is all of the hard part is done with that. Now it's some of that no looking cooking. That's, that's our favorite, right? Refried beans. I'm gonna check that as well. We still have to make our Mexi rice, but that's something I think we want to put into the burrito warm so we can make that a little bit later. Our limed cabbage, we can make that pretty soon here. It does get better as it sits. The pico de gallo, so we have some in the fridge that I want to use up. So we won't be making that today but this is what we have. It was on sale like a week back, I would say. Not my favorite, definitely won't be buying that again. Is I just find that like the tomato flavor really starts to lack as it sits in the fridge. Make your pico de gallo fresh guys, if you can. Tomato, white onion, cilantro, lime juice, salt. Very, very simple. Okay, we have to shred some cheese. So the smoked cheddar, and then we just have to make some guacamole. Guac, because what kind of burrito has no guac, right? Always pay extra for guac. All right, beaners. Okay, let's get into this cabbage, friends. I am just going to kind of listen for those beans to come up and then we'll put that lid on there, get them under pressure. So purple cabbage is one of my favorites for what we're going to make just because the color is so beautiful. So when we put purple cabbage with like a citrus juice or anything acidic is it goes really bright fluorescent, like a pink kind of color. So I think it's really nice to add into a burrito. Get some green, some purple or pink and just trying to determine how much I wanna make. I'm not gonna cut this quite in half. So nice. Purple cabbage, one of my favorites. Like out of all the foods, to me, this is definitely art. Okay, I'm just gonna trim off this little bit from under there where it's really thick and tough. I know it's so pretty, so, so pretty. And then I'm gonna come in, cut that in half kind of lengthwise, and then we'll be slicing it this way, really nice and thin. If you want to, you can totally use a mandolin for this, but I think since we have time, we can work on our knife skills. So I use my index finger on the knife to guide the blade where I want it to go. Nice, slow, and controlled. Should turn that back the other way. It was better.
That can be doggo snacks. She loves her cabbage. I will laugh if she comes down in the next couple of minutes, barking at the door. Guys, did I hear cabbage? There are cabbage snacks. So let's just put this in a little bowl, something where it'll be easy to mix. I'm gonna try and do this relatively quick so that I can also wipe off the purple from my wooden board. Otherwise it will stain it. So let's do our other half here. That leaf's just gonna fall off anyways, so I'll put that aside. That pork is smelling so lovely. I'm getting like all of the onion, garlic, and bay leaf. I think it would be torture if you made carnitas in a slow cooker overnight. Torture yourself. Hey, Scooter Beach. How's the day? I know, Nike. There might be a local breeder here of like the same breed that they're gonna try and get a litter for like the end of the year. So we might get a little pepper. Since our Posh's original breeder is just not working out. There's no way for us to get a pupper from Iowa right now to here with the embargo. So we gave up on that one, even though we waited two years for it. Okay, just wiping off my cutting board before I stain it all purple. Might be too late. <laughs> you love how you can hear me slicing through the cabbage? Yeah, I feel like this mic has really improved since we got the Go XLR mixer attached to it. Audio is just like tenfold. It's going, it's a little chilly. 35 with the wind chill. Hoo wee. Are you East Coast, Scooter Beach? <laughs> Sam. Savantism, thank you for the follow. Yeah, if we're gonna have a stain, purple is the best, it's true. All right, I'm gonna grab our lime out. Got some limey from yesterday. Oh, you're in Rocky Mountain area. Oh, that is chilla. Chilla, chilla. beans are almost simmering. So I'm gonna put the lid on there now, build up that pressure a bit. Make sure you have it set to the right pressure setting as well. Boop high pressure. Okay, now that's gonna start to build up. Not trying to be mean, why would you be mean? Just curious, do I usually tie my hair back so I don't keep touching my hair then the food? Mm, I mean, being a chef, obviously, yes, if I was working in a restaurant, but because I'm cooking for just myself, I am okay with myself touching my hair and then the food that I'm going to eat. But I'm, I'm usually, I think I try to be pretty good with like keeping it out of the food. I would tie it back if there would be like times where it's like, oh wow, another hair in my dish. But 
I don't usually get hair in my food, so I don't feel the need for it. But for sure, I mean, any restaurant situation, I usually call the Timbit as I just don't usually have like a little bun back there, everything tied up. Yeah, really important. That's a great question. And yeah, don't don't feel like you're being mean. It's we're we're all open here and we're all trying to learn together. Very valid question. Okay, so I'm gonna start by salting the cabbage. Just a little bit, as well as some black pepper. You're in Wyoming, but that's the area, nice. Yeah, Rocky Mountains, so good. Yeah, there will be times on stream that, well, if you stick around, you'll see that we do cook for some other families local in the area that I will for sure have my hair tied back at that point and just be really food safe. Yeah, I know, mmm, Timbits. <laughs> Okay, now get our lime juice. Can you guys hear the little whistle coming from the pressure cooker? Okay, look at how that automatically like kind of changed the color of the cabbage. Doing a little more. I don't think we have to go all the way with that half lime. it out. It's going to start to go like a pinky, really bright, vibrant purple color. And then the same thing happens to red onions when you put acid on them as well. How long will kimchi last in the fridge? Well, it should last forever if you make it right. Is mine usually lasts years, if that helps. If you ferment it properly, it should never go bad. And then the only other thing is when using it, just be sure to use really clean utensils when you're taking it out of the jar. Okay, this looks good. So obviously as it sits, it's gonna kind of marinate even more. I'm just gonna take a little bit. Mmm, it's really li <clears throat> limey. The pepper got me there. A sprinkle of salt and I think we're good. The salt will balance out that little bit of acidity. Two and a half weeks so far, picked it up at your local Korean store. Keep it for your ramen, yeah. Kimchi, so good, and it's good for you. It's supposed to help with digestion. So let's do a half teaspoon of salt. And then we're just going to mix that up and put it back into the fridge. These are the cameras that I use for my stream. Beautiful, loving that color. Okay, stove top, can you hear our beaners? So now I can turn that burner down to a low heat. And now is a good time to set. I'm gonna do a 25 minute timer. You get the super hot ramen jumbo Korean size, nice. I like to make my own kimchi and then I usually use daikon radish because I like how crunchy it is. Okay, cabbage is going away. Shout out 
that we work into the guac, I think. So we can cross off our cabbage. I have a half avo here. Sammy stole half last night. I guess it was too good. I have another one here, so I'm making a pretty small batch. That's a good avo. It's a good avo. Yep. Your clean white shit has broth dots all over. <laughs> or your shirt. Your shirt. Oh, yes. Beautiful. <laughs> your shirt. Your clean white. <laughs> Beep. Excuse me? Yeah, gorgeous avo. Oh man. If only we always lucked out with that. <laughs> if only. So I like to slice my avos first. Or dice them and then kind of mash them up for guac. Cause I don't go like full mushed up guac. I like to have a couple avo chunks still in there. Yeah, this, this avo should feel ashamed. It's only cause Sam cut it open last night and then just we left it open in the fridge like that. So it started to oxidize. But when he did have it yesterday, it looked pretty perfect. Yeah, if only they were always perfectly ripe when you wanted them. Rock hard or overripe? Those are your options. <laughs> So right away, I always squeeze lime juice over the top of that, and that'll help keep it nice and green for us going forward. And I would recommend not making too much guac. I'd rather make this fresh every day than having it sit, because you'll just have it taste better that way. Probably will need more lime juice, but that's a good little initial amount just to keep it from oxidizing. And then my guac is really, really simple. So a little bit of hot sauce, some cilantro. I like to use garlic powder. Yeah, guac is best fresh, right? I don't love the fresh garlic because I find that it's going to be too strong in this. Like I'd rather taste all of the ingredients than have like a fresh garlic because sometimes it can be really overpowering. So I usually go with the granulated garlic, just a little pinch of it. But to each their own, right? Like 
guacamole is definitely something that everyone tailors to their own taste. Some like it more limey or like Lilia likes it a little bit more garlicky. But I like mine really balanced, especially if we're gonna put it in a burrito. So there's like a ton of garlic in the pork already. We're gonna be putting garlic into both the rice and the oh, beans. Yeah. We're getting garlicky today for sure. What's up, my spicy amigos? Hi, Norges. 21 months in a row, dude. Thank you so much. I hope you have been well through all of this. It's good to see you again. Yeah, we're just starting to spice it up. So this is actually a homemade Chipotle Buffalo hot sauce. I just reused the bottle from the store. And this is like a medium or mild hot sauce. More flavor than anything. So I'm just actually going to use the rest of the bottle. Don't worry though, there is more. Okay, we got that. Still need some salt. Yeah, those are all good questions. Add a little bit of salt to start, as well as some pepper. Boop. And like all of the condiments and sides for burritos, these are all good things to make with kids too. A lot of stirring stuff in bowls. And if I can remember when I was young, I loved to stir stuff, whether it was in a bowl or a pot. It's like, wow, that's my job, yes. Stir it up. Just push that aside for now. Let's get into our cilantro. Yeah, it's not even mixed up yet. Do a bunch like that. <laughs> yeah, cilantro, yuck. Yeah, my dad despises cilantro, but stuff like guacamole or pico de gallo, he actually eats it with cilantro. That's like the only two dishes. Or Tom Kagai soup. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably watching just being like, yes, you are correct, child. <laughs> Yeah, some people have the gene that makes it taste like soap to them. Can't blame you guys if you say yuck to cilantro. Thankfully, I don't have that gene. So I'm going to cilantro this up. I'm just gonna chop off this little bit of stem from the bottom, but we can use the rest of that. Guac is the only form of avo you'll eat. Yeah, there you go. Is avocado is, is an interesting one too for people, right? Texture wise, it's really fatty. So it can be like a touch overwhelming to some people's palates. So just bunch up our cilantro and we're just gonna do nice fine chops. Turning up the pressure cooker a touch. And we'll come back, do one more chop. I do not remember the last time I had a burrito. Were we in the States, Sam? San Diego? I actually don't remember. Or it would have been a taco fino. Yeah, there it is, guys. Dad, yes, child, you are correct. <laughs> Good old coriander, yeah. 
Yeah, if you're not North American, this is coriander. <laughs> Yeah, we're glad to not be one of the soap tasting people. Hooray! Okay, I think that's it. We've got all the things in here that I usually put. Give it like an initial mash. I still think we will need more lime. It's looking a bit dry in there. Limey. There's no shortage of those today. That's the thing with something as fatty as avocado. You need all that acidity to balance it out. Yeah, this would be way too much cilantro in his guac. Quarter teaspoon, he says. <laughs> Is it even worth it to chop it then? <laughs> Choose your own guac destiny. So like I said, I like mine kind of semi-smooth. I like a smashed guac, not a smooth guac. Almost there. I think that's good to me. Yum. Soap Lantro. <laughs> nice, Norges. You have your month off now, so everything is just exceptionally good. Do you have anything exciting planned? Let's give this a taste. Because we know it's just going to get better as it sits, too. I think that's perfect. It could maybe use a bit of salt, but I think I'll hold back on that because we're going to be seasoning some other stuff too. So put that in the fridge. We're good to go. Guac complete. Cabbage complete. Let's switch back to our refried beans. Let me check the ingredients that we need because there is 11 minutes left on them cooking back there. So we need to chop up some onion nice and fine, get some more garlic for that. We need chili powder and cumin. And then we'll chop up a bit more cilantro as well for finishing them. And then I think I want to put poblano peppers in the refried beans. What do you guys think? Chop that up nice and fine. I think that would add a really good flavor. The list goes, <laughs> losing money on the socks and you have some carpentry to keep you sane. Nice. Yeah, this year, not a good one for investments, right? Or maybe you did luck out on the investments. Okay, I'm gonna go quickly grab an onion. I need another one in here. Yeah, yes to the peppers, right? Okay, be right back.
I'm back. We got little baby onions, which is actually perfect. Yeah, carpentry is super cool, right? There's so many good smells in here. We got this little yellow onion and that's just gonna be fine. Cut it in half, peel it up, and then we'll chop it. Okay, so they say in really fine dice on the onion. So the same way that we followed the curve of the onion for the pork, we'll do that as well. So nice thin slices, the only difference is we're not gonna cut all the way through the onion. So we're gonna leave our blade about a quarter inch back from the top of the onion. So that'll keep everything together up top. And then when we go to turn it and make our dices, it won't all fall apart. It's a really clean way of chopping an onion. So make our slits. Boom, turn it that way. Everything's staying together. Little side of the onion skin's a bit tough, so I'm just gonna take that off. And then we do nice little dices. It stays together for the most part. Sometimes you have like the top layer that wants to fall off. Just do your best, go nice and slow. And then I usually turn it when it wants to fall over and then just come back and roughly chop it. And that way we don't waste anything. Woohoo! We'll do our other half as well. Nothing like a professional Norges with your carpentry. Current project is a kid Chesterfield chair for a baptism gift. Aw, that's really nice. I feel like I got that when I was young. My grandpa made me this little special chair as well. I just don't know if it's called a Chesterfield though. Is it like a sh really short chair with a tall back? Bam. That is good to go. Just put that up top here. We'll move into our garlic and poblano peppers. If you wanted to spice up the refried beans, by all means, use jalapenos. It's a prayer chair, oh, okay. Mamacita with the fat. Yeah, we've used over a head of garlic already today in our burrito prep. It's good. It is good. Smash these. And then we will use the garlic press to mince the garlic. It's more of a smoky gentleman's club chair. Oh, I like it. That's a good baptism gift. 
<laughs> yeah, a mini version. Love it. Just put our garlic up there. And now for our peppers. So I'm gonna go top and bottom and then make a slit through the middle. And then I usually open this up and then take all the seeds and the core out. So I'm gonna do that over my compost container so I don't have to take them all off of the cutting board. And I just pick it out with my hands, just tear the ribs out and then just tap the pepper to get all the seeds out. Next, I'm just gonna cut that all the way in half so that we can kind of lay it flat to be able to chop it up better. So this side will be a bit of a challenge, it looks like. So I'm just gonna come back in and cut it one more time too curved and now we have our pieces that we can slice the bottom we can still use the top part I just tear it off from the stem let's do that with our other piece cooking advice yeah rub your eyes after cutting peppers it'll help clean them <laughs> Guys, don't do that. That will hurt. A laugh of hate. No, that was like a laugh of terror of like feeling bad for the person who actually does that. <laughs> Please don't. Terrified. Boom. All right. I think I'm gonna cut it this way. Yeah, it gives you such a good excuse to not drive to work or school. So what happened? I've been peppered. I peppered myself. Okay, so we're gonna try to match the size of our pepper to the nice small size of our onion. So start by doing our thin strips. cut in half same with that one it just makes it easier for us to fit it onto our knife blade whoa I mean, you can't really go wrong with adding more veggies to something. I love veggies. Boom. I was just thinking about those beans. I was like, That's, that timer's got to go off pretty soon here. <laughs> Okay, hit that. Pork is looking really good too. Switch this up for a sec. Yeah, it's wrong. Look at this. This is like the liquid is definitely cooked down. It's getting there. I'm gonna actually turn that just a touch lower. Turn that simmer down a bit. 
It's looking so good already. Our next step for our, our beans is we gotta let this release the pressure naturally. So I just take it off of the hot burner for now. And then if we want to try and rush it, we can open up the pressure. So start turning it down. But you don't have to do that. You can do it naturally. It usually takes about 10 minutes if you do it naturally. Yeah, more fish. Who did the stuffed fish come out? Or how? Oh, man. Yesterday's stream was one for the books. Yeah, if you guys want to go back, that's a VOD to watch. There's some good clips from yesterday. It turned out and it was actually really tasty, but it was a lot of work. Yeah, she almost lost her head. The fish lost its head. What's in the other pot besides the pork? That's me making a chicken bone broth. So that's been simmering away since about 4 p.m. yesterday. So it simmered overnight. And then this morning I added some garlic and ginger, coriander seed, fennel seed, and peppercorn to it. And I'm gonna cook it again overnight. And then tomorrow we'll strain it. Yeah, I've been on a bone broth kick and honestly, I've been feeling really good. I'm into it. Move that over and then we'll just take smaller piles and just do your best here. Obviously there's like all sorts of shapes and sizes of the poblano. Just cut it nice, slow, and controlled. Yeah, three days in the making, you know it's going to be good. Do I cook like this every day? I do not. So I only stream Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then during the week, uh, a lot of the times I try to get like a YouTube video out, so I'll do something a little bit easier for content. But yeah, during the week I eat very simply. I love breakfast food, so like eggs and toast and vegetables is a good go-to or something really quick with rice. I like simple food. And then I like to use my stream as an outlet for my creativity and trying new things with you guys. And I don't even, I just don't think it would even be like sustainable or even affordable to cook like this every day. Unless maybe that's all you had to do, well then, heck yeah, I am in. That would be my dream job, really. Is when this whole quarantine thing is over, the whole pandemic is weird. We're gonna be searching for a couple more families to add into our life to cook for. Would love to do that. And I mean, especially now after the pandemic and seeing what happened with all of the small restaurants, I will never be opening a restaurant in my life, guys. Just seeing how little support they got from the government and stuff is, that's just a huge liability that I do not want to have responsibility for. My, my knife skills are life goals, so many, many hours spent in a kitchen. I mean, nine years, let's say I worked five days a week in a kitchen. At, like, 
let's say on the low end I did eight hours a day, five days, so 40 hours a week. Let's say I wasn't chopping the whole time, but for sure, probably a good two hours worth. So about 10 hours a week practicing knife skills and then kind of the same now. I would say I probably chop more now that I stream at home and we stream about 12 hours worth of content minimum a week. So it honestly is just something that you have to take time and practice. There's no other way to it. The only other thing that will help you is having a great knife. And that's it guys. That really is it. Nor did you add some oat porridge. Blueberry pancakes was amazing. Could not guess that they had oats in them. Nice. Yeah, nice and healthy. It's always good, hey, when you eat healthy food and it doesn't taste healthy. It's always a nice surprise. These last little bits of peppers, just kind of rough chopping it. This is going into the pinto beans, right? So it's gonna be mashed up. You don't have to worry too, too much about having everything perfect. It's a good amount of pepper. You chop stuff up like Chuck Norris. He just stares at the food and it cuts itself. Love it. Love it, Torino. Yeah, there you go, Taz. Throw out that business plan. The food van is still doable. Yes, exactly, Norges, but for sure, never a restaurant. Sorry to ruin all of your dreams, guys. But that has like kind of always been how I felt from day one is that was never my end goal to open a restaurant or even be like a head chef. No, that was not something I looked into really. I just like cooking really. Okay. Onion, garlic, we got our pepper. Now we just need our spices. And then while our beans are simmering with everything, we can chop our cilantro. Super simple. So chili powder and ground cumin. Am I a personal chef to paying clients and families? We have one family that we cook for right now. And that is a goal down the line is to have a handful or two handfuls of families that we're able to cook for every week is I would love to be able to just work from home and cook for people that really appreciate the food and are willing to support local farms and stuff like that. That's definitely, I think, my end goal. Yeah, maybe a food truck for sure. It's definitely an option. People here are also very supportive of like local food and people working from home and stuff like that. So it's for sure doable. There's a tiny place in Vancouver somewhere that only serves soups and broths out of a window, takeout only. That's what you'd like to do. Totally, yeah. A pop-up, yes. Yeah, people love pop-ups too. So a lot of the times is you can approach a restaurant and be like, this is my plan. This is what I want to do. Here is my menu that I want to create. Can I please use your space on this day that you're closed to do that? And a lot of the times they'll support you and say, yeah. Yep, a new trendier way to go, totally. So you build up your hype that way on like social media, one time only thing. People got to get that food, right? We're working our way there. I can feel it. And you guys obviously help too, right? Okay, chili powder, cumin. If you can find Mexican chili powder, that'll be better. Also, are we able to take a peek at our beans? Can we peek? Let's see how we did. So always be sure to turn your pressure. Cause look, there was still some in there. It could have popped the lid if we went to just go 
open it. So now all the pressure is released. To be sure, we look here. So this is like our locking mechanism. When it's locked and under pressure, the red thing is like pushed up against the black. So I know now everything's released. Nothing's gonna explode when we open this. Just go slow as well. Boom! How did those do? They're like just cooked. I think I'm just gonna simmer them a bit more in this pot while we start frying up our onions and peppers and then I think we'll be good. It's like there's just a touch like al dente crunch. So it's not bad, but I know that if we went to try and mash this, we wouldn't get a really nice mash. I'm gonna do this. Make some room. Turn that up. When you make soups, it's usually an all day affair, like 10 hours. I love that. Frying pans in the oven. So we're gonna start heating up our pan for the beans. I'm gonna use my cast iron. So start with some olive oil in there, just enough to coat the bottom for us to start cooking the onions. Should we give this pork a stir while we're here? See how it's doing? Oh man. I think I might have to, actually, I was gonna say I have to add more liquid, but it's already starting to fall apart. So let's not, let's just keep following the recipe, keep simmering it until the liquid is cooking out. Yum. Oh man, it is hot in here. Probably not the best day to cook everything on the stove top. <laughs> Why didn't we make salad today? Tima, you have a wife that enjoys slow cooker meals and you benefit from it all. Yes, exactly. Lilia, you wish you could stand on your feet long enough for that. There's nothing better than a soup that takes that long. Yeah, you gotta work your way up to that. Oh, I should have roasted the peppers. Yeah, we would have got a bit more flavor for sure, but I think it'll be good sauteed as well. It's still zero there. Yeah, please send the cold air because honestly, it's like 26 degrees Celsius outside. <sighs> okay, it looks like our frying pan is hot. So we're going to start with the onion first and then the garlic and then the peppers. Time for a snow dance. I don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> Sam's saying no. He's shutting that down right away. These are the actually the days. So one part, one good thing about working in an industrial kitchen in a restaurant is you usually have like a walk-in fridge or a freezer. That's your saving grace on those hot days. One way to cool off, just go into the fridge or freezer and just stand there for a couple of minutes. And usually everyone knows if you're not in the kitchen, that's where you are. 
It's like, oh, where'd Kate go? Oh, she's just cooling off in the fridge. <laughs> or there would be some times where it's so hot in the summer and you're trying to plate like a dessert, something like sorbet or ice cream. You gotta plate it in the freezer. Otherwise it'll just melt. Good times. This is a full stove top. Yeah, why did we make burritos today? <laughs> yeah. We need Sammy to build an outdoor kitchen. Well, I mean, we have some stuff there. Just need like a little outdoor stove. It'd actually be way too hot cooking outside today. It'd be even hotter. Yeah, we'll cancel the snow dance and then instead you can do a brisket dance. Yeah, we're, I was just looking for something in the freezer. I couldn't find it though. <laughs> exactly, Norges. Okay, so we're gonna start sauteing our onion to build up the flavor. We like to cook it till it's nice golden brown. Get some caramelization happening. And then as you guys can see, the beans are still just simmering away. And we're not gonna add the garlic to this until the onion is almost done cooking. Don't wanna rush that. Drink. We might have time later to make a drink, we'll see. Cheers, Rook. Cheers, guys, I'm staying hydrated. Trying to stay hydrated today. Okay, we still have to make Mexi rice. We still have to shred some of the smoked cheddar for our burritos. And then we're pretty much good to go. The rice should take us kind of no more than 15 minutes. I do a really like simple and quick Mexi rice. So we'll use basically the same spices in the refried beans. So chili powder, cumin, maybe even a bit of coriander in there. You're hydrating as well. Yeah, beer is 85% water. Kate. You want crabs? Yeah, smart man. Rook knows. Let's give this a stir. Gonna turn that burner up. It's the smaller burner, so. She's struggling a bit. Yay! Oh, what's that? Keep our onions nice and spread out so they cook evenly. Okay, what is happening back here? You guys always do it while I have my back turned. Sammy with the thousand biddies. Thank you. Rook as well with 500 and Cookie with the thousand. Wait, we just crushed the goal. Friends, thank you so much. Yeah, we're firing up the train. Choo choo. Woohoo. Let's start it from over here. <laughs> What's a trivet? It's our wonderful blue fish that we have on stream. So I felt like I was always shuffling this guy around too much since I only have one. So now I have another one thanks to you guys. So thank you so much. That should last me the rest of my life. I only try and buy stuff that lasts and doesn't break for us. And it's purple. Wahoo! Oh! Onions are starting to brown up a bit. Now I know I can turn the pan down a touch. A 
couple more minutes on those. I'm gonna stir up our beaners here. There we go. That's looking more like it. The beans are looking more like plump now rather than being a bit shriveled. Did I salt the onions? Not yet. Yeah, we're gonna be tooting later. But apparently, so the soaking part of the dried beans is supposed to help you digest them a bit better. So I guess we'll see. I'll keep you guys updated on that one. <laughs> You're like, please, Kate, don't. Please don't. It, no need, really. That was a good question, though, Torino, is, yeah, salting onions will actually help them brown up a bit as you cook them. So I usually don't add it right away. Usually when I'm uh, about halfway through. So add our salt. It'll help to draw out some moisture as well. white dove with the other hundred biddies yeah edumacation beans beans the musical fruit the more you eat the more you <laughs> toot it's hot it is hot Daph. yeah it is hot I think it's almost garlic time. <laughs> Beaners cold outside it's snowing yeah can't con you norges anyone without ac is going to be hurting do you got some real hot weather too daff yeah considering like our half of the country is summertime weather and then the other half where sam's parents are they're in a polar vortex and getting snow what It's like ADF. Yeah, that is warm then, hey? Okay. Grab all of our garlic cloves for our refried beans. And the garlic press. Which I have to rinse. So we'll saute the garlic a couple minutes. And then we can add the poblano pepper. And then by that time, I think our pinto beans will be perfectly cooked. And we'll be able to mash them up with all the flavors. Be really good. Thanks guys for the awesome hype train and crushing our bit goal once again. Can't wait to show you guys that trivet when it comes in. Holy, we got all of the emotes. Oh, that's a cool new one. I love cherries. Mmm, that's smelling so good back there. Something about brown enough onions.
stir that in. Oh yeah, we got some good color. So the garlic will only take about a minute as it browns really quickly. That's why we add it a lot later. So spread it out and let that go. Just something about that, hey? Garlic man, the real superhero, yep. 80 Fahrenheit and you gotta make lasagna? <laughs> Again? <laughs> Good luck with that. It can't be any worse than what I have going on in here today. Okay, stir that garlic. She is browning up. Smells so good. Let's add our peppers. Michelangelo, how are you doing? It's a good amount of peppers, but they will cook down as well. It's quite a bit of liquid in there. Sizzle, sizzle, that's what we're looking for. Oh goodness, a raid? I'm terrified. <laughs> you guys. Ah! <laughs> the raid in the fridge. This seems like a typical Sunday thing. Oh, it's just cheese pizza again, guys. Don't don't worry too much. He can't be that hungry. Welcome in, guys. How did the stream go today? We are busy, busy right now cooking everything on the stove top. But we are almost done making up our refried beans here for our burritos. So we're frying up onion, garlic, and poblano peppers for the base of our refried beans. Really good smells happening in here. What kind of pizza did cheese make today? Hi, Lynn, good to see you. Twitch tweaker, welcome in. Cheese, what'd you do? I'm also going to salt the peppers as they cook now. So we added a bit of salt to the onion. Now we can salt the pepper, help draw out some moisture too. And then I'm just gonna turn off our pinto beans. Hello? Hello! You made nine pizzas? Oh, was today your charity pizza day? Wait for the shake. Oh man, yeah, totally makes up for yesterday's stuff. Cheese fish. <laughs> the milk fish, so good. Yesterday's stream, yeah, I keep saying one for the books, for sure. A lot of learning was done yesterday on stream. And today we're keeping it pretty simple, something that I've eaten quite a bit of and I know how to make everything, burritos. Hey, Spiker, good to see you. Recipe is coming along quite nicely. We should be eating here probably in the next half an hour or so. I'm gonna stir these peppers. So our carnitas are simmering away here. We used a nice authentic recipe. And then we are making our refried beans from scratch. We started with dried beans today. And then our other pot that you guys see here on the stove top, this is a chicken bone broth that I've had going since yesterday. Yeah, Shinvu, sad to say, you learned that the milkfish tastes like a can of tuna. It doesn't though, like it's kind of like that, but it's better than that. 
cheese. Today was a special charity event where you made pizzas in exchange for donations to charity. I love that. Your first ever event. Sammy, move your head, please. Thank you. And I'm guessing that everything went good then. Your first round of snow or first round of year snow finally gone in Northern BC. Congrats, Spiker. Yeah. I'm guessing you have really nice weather like we do down here in Southern BC. Nice Torino. Yeah, go get those chimkin wings. Stir, stir, stir. I'm gonna turn up this pan a touch. Get a little bit of char on our poblano peppers too. And then we will just mix in a little bit of chili powder still and some cumin before we add the beans to this. It's plus 20. Yes, just beautiful, isn't it? Feels so good. And the garden couldn't be happier, hey? Gonna stir around this pork again. See how it's doing. It's just kind of starting to fall apart. So that's a great sign. Because like I said, we only have about half an hour more to go with it. Pork braised with citrus, onion, garlic, oregano, and bay leaf. And then after this, it's kind of fried in its own fat. Pretty magical indeed. And if you guys want to check out the recipes from today, so I have the carnitas recipe linked there as well as our refried beans. And they're also already posted in Discord. So you can go reference them at any time. You're a terrible gardener, Spiker. You're trying some snap peas, hot peppers, and cherry tomatoes. Those are a good place to start for sure. You might have a bit of difficulty with the tomatoes and peppers, depending on like how much heat and sun you get up there. But I think you're good to go. Sounds good, Cheese. I'm sure you got a lot of cleanup to do. We'll be here for a bit still. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of browning action on our poblano peppers. One more minute in this mixture, and then we'll add our spices. We're gonna take our beans off, and then we'll strain them. Finally push this guy back onto the burner properly. Okay, so I'm gonna go with a tablespoon of chili powder and then a teaspoon of cumin into there so a tablespoon of chili powder teaspoon of cumin and this is all ground up Give that a nice stir. I always find it's a good idea to kind of saute your spices a bit in the oil. I feel like we get more flavor that way. Okay, now I'm gonna turn that off and just take it off of the heat for a sec. Oh no. You guys are gambling? Good luck. <laughs> Cookie, lost them all. Sammy, lost them all. What are you guys doing? Okay, real quick. Take a look at our beans. So obviously check them before we strain them from the water. Make sure that they are able to 
be broken down and mashed up, right? So they are. I'm just gonna use a strainer, dump them into there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Drain the water out, and then we're gonna put them into that pan. So I'm gonna put my trivet here, and then mash them up with everything. Hey, Paul and Jock, how are you? Yum. They really do smell buttery. I think pintos are some of my favorite. Okay, just set this spoon aside because we will be using it later, but definitely need some sort of masher. So like a potato masher, something like that. Smells so good already. And then we just have to add some lime juice and some chopped fresh cilantro to this once it's all mixed up. So I'm just gonna do a little initial mash. Oh, that's hot. Hold on to the handle. Because I also like a little bit of texture in our refried beans, so I don't need it all mush. Yeah, when is Twitch going to come out with Twitch smells? <laughs> wow. Mmm, I'm so happy we added the poblano pepper to this. That just gave it like a whole nother depth of flavor. And look at how creamy and buttery this looks already. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing refried beans with black beans, I feel like it would get too dry. No potato masher, it's here. I'm just trying to mix in all of the stuff that was in the pan underneath. Cause I kind of just poured the beans on top and then mashed them. Um, I'll start mashing it up real good once we get the cilantro and lime in. Okay, lime. That was like semi-juiced already. Come in with that one, a little bit more. Some pepper. Probably need a good amount of salt added to this as well. Gonna move this over for a sec. Get our cilantro out again. Good chop of that. And once again, just gonna trim off that little bit from the bottom of this stem. And then I like to come in, chop it in half, and then just bunch it up all together. I find it's way easier to chop like this. 
So bunch it all up with your one hand, hold everything together, and then start choppity chopping. Do an initial rough chop and then we can go back over it afterwards. Yeah, this is my first time making refried beans at home. I think this is a really good thing to keep around to like snack on. Really flavorful, pretty healthy, good amount of protein. Definitely a good vegan thing or vegetarian dish. There we go. Bam. Bring that back over. We'll mash it up a touch more. We'll taste it, see what we think it needs still. Instead of the watery sludge restaurants serve up. We don't have a ton of Mexican restaurants here. So yeah, like refried beans, not usually a thing that's easy to find. And then I would say if you're finding that your beans are maybe too dry, just add a bit of water or if you have some broth, like I'll probably add a little scoop of a chicken broth from the stove top. But yeah, I think leaving a bit of texture with this kind of food is important because there's a lot of like soft, mushy stuff in burritos, right? <laughs> I wish you guys could smell it. I'm getting ready for the taste test. What do we think? Is that a good consistency? I think it needs a touch of liquid, just a touch. I'm gonna taste it first so I can judge the amount that we need. A touch of liquid just to loosen it up a bit and then for sure salt. Your mom always made it with bacon fat? Yeah, not sure if that made it all that healthy. <laughs> not the healthiest option for sure. <laughs> okay. Getting a little ladle here. Look at the color of this broth. Beautiful. Pour that in. Come over to our salt. So we didn't add any salt other than when we were cooking the veggies and beans will take quite a bit of seasoning. If you taste it the first time and you're like, yeah, that's pretty good, add more salt. If you taste it the second time and you're like, oh, that's getting better, probably add more salt again and then taste it the third time and you'll be like, that's delicious. Usually stuff like this takes me two or three times to get the flavor just right. And I think we still need a bit more liquid.
Plus we're also adding more flavor by adding the chicken broth instead of water, right? There we go. Now it looks kind of creamy. That's what we're looking for. Remember, you don't want anything too, too wet because then it'll make your burrito soggy. A bit more salt and we are great. I don't think you should really taste the lime in here, but the lime is used to kind of balance out the other flavors, but it shouldn't taste acidic at all. Should taste more of the cumin and chili powder than anything. Okay, so that can just now sit on the stove top. Keep it warm if you want, but you don't have to. What's in this? Here is the recipe. If you wanna follow that, the only thing I did different is I used dried beans rather than canned beans today, but everything else we followed. Super yum. Okay, next up, our Mexi rice. Get a very small pot out, because I usually don't load my burritos with rice. I would rather have meat than rice, per se, because you're gonna pay more for meat in your burrito. So I'm only gonna cook a cup of rice for us. And I use jasmine. Some people like to make their Mexi rice by cooking it in like a tomato sauce or juice, but I don't actually love that method is I'd rather have a water. And we have so much flavor in those refried beans and the pork and the guac that we don't have to go crazy here. Okay, so I always like to toast up my rice before I add water to it. So dry toast, we'll go over to the stove. Luckily we have one burner free here. So I will turn that on to a medium high heat. And we are going to just kind of keep stirring our rice as it toasts. So rice kernels when we start out is they are kind of like translucent looking. As this toasts, they're gonna turn more like opaque or white, and that's how we know it's toasting. We'll get more nutty flavor, as well as we'll have nice separated kernels of rice. So I find a lot of times in burritos, the rice is just like a mush, kind of there just to fill up space in the burrito. That's not what we want. I'd rather have some more texture in the rice as well. Yeah, toasted rice is so good. It's just one simple step that makes it way better so with our one cup of rice we'll use two cups of water or broth if you want you toasted your rice for fried rice and it was absolutely amazing yeah yeah one of those things, you don't know the difference until you try it, right? I think you'll have to try that next time you pull out the rice cooker. Ooh, yeah, Bonkman, I would love to hear what you think of that one. also going to grab out some paprika and that's what will be the main thing to give our Mexi rice that nice kind of orangey red color. So we'll add our spices when we add the water so they can cook into the rice kernels. 
I think we'll get the best result that way. And then all we gotta do is shred some cheese and finish off frying our pork under the broiler. We are laughing, friends. Ha ha ha. Haven't made a ton of dishes today either. So that's always a bonus. Finally got that bone broth up to a simmer again. Give this a swirl. Guys, what's your favorite filling in burritos? Do you usually choose pork, chicken, beef, or vegetarian? Stir the rice. And then when it looks like, oh, my rice kernels fell in the bone broth. When it looks like half of the kernels are toasted, that's when we can start to think about adding the liquid. Laura, etc. thank you for the follow. You usually do beef or chimkin. <laughs> Chicken for War 80. Sask K, thank you for the follow as well. Welcome in, friends. Pork is for tacos for you. Ooh, yeah. Pork, pork, pork. War 80, thank you for the follow. Pork or beef for Sammy? Yeah, burritos are a hard one. And then we have a local like burrito spot. It's called Taco Fino, where they do like fried chicken in it. So good, or like a fried fish. I mean, it gets a bit soggy, so you have to eat it quick, but very tasty as well as a different variation. Okay, this rice is looking perfect. Let's shake a little bit of our spices into here. Some chili powder. A touch of cumin. Boom. And then touch of paprika. About half a teaspoon. And now add the water. Need one more cup. There we go. And now I'm gonna put a lid on that to bring it up to a boil. Yeah, it's not a simmer, it's actually a boil if you want nice fluffy rice. <laughs> Laura's just drooling. Yeah, you came in at a great time. Oh, and I suppose just a pinch of salt will go a long way in that rice is you'll be able to taste more of the spices. Get that in there. There we go. The end is near, friends. Especially now that we got the rice on. come up to a boil and then we'll just turn it down a touch and then that should not take more than 10 minutes cooking on the stove top. I think we should give our pork a little stir around see if it's kind of starting to fall apart or what. 
definitely looking like it. Give it like a little press. So some pieces are and some aren't. But that's totally fine because we still have a couple minutes to go. So what we need to do, I'm actually going to start removing the oranges and preparing this for the oven. So I have four pieces of orange in here that it's been cooking with. And it also says to take out the bay leaf. Before we start frying. There's that, there's one. The other one's underneath with the orange. This orange is just like gone almost. Boom. There's the other leaf of bay. Okay, we'll keep this simmering away, but we can see that all of the liquid's almost cooked out and then we'll just be left with the pork and the pork fat. And our rice is up. I'm gonna pop that open so it doesn't boil over. And we're grabbing our cheese. That's Gruyere. Guys, I'm gonna turn on the oven now. So the last step for our pork carnitas. Hi, Relic, I hope you are well. Good to see you today. Everything is looking really good. I mean, even these beans that are not the best thing to look at, but they are tasty. So we have to turn on our oven to 450 Fahrenheit. And that finishes off the pork, so it kind of fries and crisps up. Super yum. While we wait for our rice, we have some smoked cheddar here, homemade as well. So if you guys are interested in learning about smoking foods, this is also a good place to be. Just taking a peek at our rice first. I think that's fine back there. Come in with our cheese grater. And we'll just grate enough cheese to put into our burritos. And I thought the little bit of smoke flavor on the cheddar would be really good. When in doubt, always great more than you think you need you're doing damn good nice yeah it's been a great day it's so beautiful out no complaints that's for sure yes so pozole verde is also one of my favorite things and pretty sure we made it not too long ago Probably can still find the VOD on Twitch for it. But yeah, it is so good, hey? I love Mexican food. So one place that I worked at is I helped to open a authentic Mexican taqueria. And this was in my earlier years of cooking. And I'm so happy that I did because, yeah, and Mexican food is like near and dear to my heart from that. My favorite food and why? My favorite food is pizza. I am a simple person and I don't know, I think because it's so simple, there's so many different variations of pizza and I just love Italian food as well, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, cheese is just like, yes. I love cooking pizzas too. Like that was one of my favorite, favorite jobs. Wood-fired pizzas. Man, I was good at that. Pumping up those pizzas in like 90 seconds. Let's go. You too, Kevin, that's your favorite? My favorite pizza toppings, you're gonna hate me. I mean, margarita is always old faithful, let's say, but I am, I am a kid that grew up eating Hawaiian pizza. That's me. But I like all sorts of things. Like, I am not picky about my pizza toppings either. Pretty much anything is good to go for me. Yeah, pineapple. Ham and pineapple. Also, this is a Canadian thing, is when I've made ham and pineapple pizzas on stream before, we've looked it up. It came from us. So yeah, feel free to blame the Canadians for the ham and pineapple pizza. We did that. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take that blame for you. Checking on my rice. Oh yeah. So look at all of our little holes here. Relic. Thank you for the two months in a row, dude. Appreciate that. Always love having you around. Okay, so our holy rice. That's a good sign. And this is how we get fluffy rice. So this is like an East Indian way of cooking rice. And when you see all those little air pockets, you know you're gonna have fluffy rice. Kevin, you love pizza and Italian foods. You love margarita and Hawaiian too is cool. Yay. <laughs> you're not just gonna like unfollow because I like Hawaiian pizza. Some heat as well, yeah. Usually I do, like if I'm doing pineapple, I typically put banana peppers on as well. So it's like sweet and spicy and kind of like sour. Yeah, so good. Yeah, and fresh pineapple is way different than canned pineapple. That is also a good point. Just grabbing a spoon here to see how our rice is doing. So cook it till it's dry. We're almost there. Banana peppers are a great thing in the world. They're very versatile, hey? They can go on a lot of things. Okay, carnitas coming off of the stove top, going into the oven. There you go, this big pan that we don't need. Very nicely seasoned. Pro tip, season your cast iron in the oven. If you can do your makeup in it, you did good. All right, rice is off. Next step here for fluffy rice. So take it off of the heat element, put a lid on it. Let that sit for a couple minutes. Girlfriend loves the pizza from a place right nearby. Cowbo or cowboy paniolo, they call it. Canadian bacon, fresh pineapple bacon bits. Yeah, bacon, ham, and pineapple, so good. Like pineapple is really good with smoked things. Welcome back, Norges. I didn't know that you left. <laughs> Okay, so now that our rice is done, our refried beans are done, guac is done, lime cabbage we have, we are just frying up our pork and we are good to go. Then we're gonna roll up these burritos. There it is, Crux. Yeah, Crux is like in shock right now. Cannot believe what's come out of my mouth. 
<laughs> I like your strong opinion. You're so hooked on cast iron, me too. I just find that nothing cooks as good as that. You got it wrong, Bonkman. It's just Paniolo. Did she correct you? <laughs> Yay, Norges! Yeah, yay to pineapple on pizza. Let's do it. Okay, we have our big ol' extra large soft flour burrito tortillas. Put our cilantro away, as well as our red cabbage. Yeah, no homemade tortillas today. I know it's shocking, Norges. Had an interesting stream yesterday making homemade wrappers, so I opted for the safe route today. I had enough stress on stream. <laughs> Cookie, your favorite pizza place just started delivering. Nice. It's not nearly as good as your pizzas you make. You've gotten that good, but you're craving it so bad, so it tasted good. Yeah, yeah, when you can satisfy that craving. Even if it's not as good, it still feels good, right? Hashtag lazy, huh? I love it, Norges. Yeah. I love when you mess with me. Someone has to. Gosh knows that Sammy can't. No messing with Kate. He can't mess with the chef. That's like number one rule. Never, never mess up with the chef. I'm gonna take a peek at this, see if it's like sizzling away. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yep, okay, I think, so we have a little bit of time while we wait for the pork. I'm gonna grab a little bit of ice. I will be back in like 30 seconds. We're gonna make a little beverage of sorts. I have some pineapple juice in the fridge. I have some coconut milk in the fridge. I have rum, I have mint outside. All of those things sound great together and it is way too hot to not make a beverage. Yeah, was that moonshine? <laughs> Drinking out of my milk jug. Okay, be right back. Just going to grab that ice. I'm back. All of those things sound great. Phew. Okay, so always start an alcoholic beverage with ice, unless it's whiskey, and that's up to you. Or scotch, right? So I'm gonna go with, actually, let's do it in this like nice tall glass. I think that'll look really nice in there. 
even though I just put all of my dirty fingerprints on it. Is something going TikTok? Is something going weird, guys, again? We're having a bit of issues. I mean, the other day, Norges with the noise gate, but we took it off, so you guys shouldn't be hearing anything weird. The party don't start till we walk in. <laughs> oh, it's pupper claws, yep. Doggo! You like yours with ice cookie? Just a few cubes. Yeah, open it up, right? Good one, Erin. It's just doggo. She's like, guys, I heard there was some cabbage snacks for me. Let's see. Turn that a bit for you. Okay. Fix the rug here. No, nope, get off. Cause she won't sit on the ground unless there's a rug there. She's seriously a posh. Okay, back it up. Okay, sit. Just sit. Okay, ready? Nice one. Yes. One for one. That's a good crunch one. Okay, sit. Oh, she's laying down. She's really going for it. Nice. Always give doggos veggie snacks. Okay. Distracting. Today we're making a cheesy cocktail. No, we're not. Okay. Behave, everyone. I am going to get all my fingerprints off, though. I also know that I'm definitely being judged right now by Captain Flip Flops. He was my bartender at the brewery that we opened. Now he lives on like the east coast of Canada. But yeah, he is one person in chat that has also tasted a salmon cake food once upon a time. Cheesy mustache. Okay, start with ice. I like cubes of it. We're just gonna really go for it with that one. Now, where'd Sam put the rum? <laughs> Found it. Also gonna take a peek at the pork. Oh yeah, it's starting to crisp up in there. That's one of those things that you don't wanna be watching the whole time. It's nice to like check back on it and have it transformed. So yeah, just free pour from your bottle. <laughs> I usually go for about maximum two ounces. And I don't really love white rum. Yeah, we'll go around there. That's. That's where I poured it. Not quite at half. Keep in mind that the ice really displaces a lot of that. Next up. You can also take out a couple of other condiments. So there's our cabbage. So purple. Our guac. Pineapple, coconut. Yeah, I just can't do it with the white rum. Cannot. I'm gonna remove this cheese from the board just because camera is a little bit confused right now. It doesn't know what to look at. Okay, back at it. That's like a cistern of rum. <laughs> Naked in Jamaica rum. Oh, one of my favorite, favorite rums for all of you dark rum people is, is it Jamaican? I don't know, is Flor de Cana. 
Flor de Cana, so good. Okay, what do I think I should add next? I think I'll do a little bit of our coconut milk. Yeah, that's the only way you should buy your spirits, rum and vodka. But this is like, oh, might actually have to loosen it up a touch or give it a stir. We got that thick coconut milk. Oh man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, unless it's a specialty brand, right? I'm gonna try and not go too, too rich with this. Add just a dollop. And I have some pineapple juice. What are we making now? We're making a little beverage. I had some pineapple juice and some coconut milk in the fridge. I have a little bit of rum and some lime and mint. Just something refreshing because it's really hot outside. And then I still have some lime in my juicer, so I'll squeeze that in. Not gonna go crazy with that. Peeking at our pork. She is almost done. Let's see how this mixes up. It's probably gonna be a touch like lumpy with the coconut milk. But I think I'd rather have like natural real coconut milk with a couple of lumps in the drink than like having coconut concentrate, right? Yay! Relic, thank you for the hundred biddies. Yeah, clink, cheers. Okay, I'm just gonna grab the mint. And then it's burrito time. Burrito, burrito. What we don't do, we don't just like put the entire sprig of mint on there. I like to just tear it up a bit at least. You can keep like one part for garnish, but don't just throw in the whole thing. I hate when you get that when you go out for a drink. It's like, come on. That's like putting a whole sprig of rosemary garnishing like a steak. Plus, tearing up the mint a bit will let some of the flavor out as well. It'll release the essential oils. Okay, let's see how we did. I'm definitely no bartender. I can I can cook better than I can bartender. Or bartend. Oh. That's yummy. I'm gonna put just a touch more pineapple juice. Because I think that's all it's lacking. But the coconut's definitely on the back burner, which I wanted. I wanted like a loose kind of pina colada, I guess, with mint. I mean, that's the thing with all these tropical flavors is, is they do pair nicely. You can drink better than you mix. <laughs> I did lime. I squeezed the lime juice in. I did lime it. Have one more sip. Mmm, yep. That final bit of pineapple juice, it's not the best looking. 
but it's really tasty and refreshing. Got like the little bit of rum there too. Yum. Okay. Let's check on this pork. You guys aren't ready for this. I'm gonna say that right now. And just give me a sec, Doggo wants to go up. Oven, off. was this dish as long as it gets you buzzed not really worried about how it looks yeah <laughs> the last step is my favorite yeah fry the pork in its own fat uh, okay sounds good Get that in the frame all the way for you guys. Yeah, and now tear it apart. So we're gonna come in with some tongs. Tear it apart. But before that, I am going to get our grill pan on the stove top, start heating that up so we can do a little grill on our burrito once it's all rolled up. Yeah, this is gonna keep sizzling for a good bit, I think. Get the crumbs off. So that's what I'm gonna use. Has like pretty thick grill grates and yeah it's a lodge i think this pan is around 40 dollars which is really inexpensive if you think about how much a grill costs i'm gonna turn that on to medium heat and then we can tear up the pork Fill the burritos. We're good to go. I can't wait to taste this because we haven't even touched it this whole time. Yeah, I wish I had smell a vision. This is insane. Oh my God. So you know you cooked it good when it just falls apart. I'm gonna be careful just with the bottom of this dish. I don't wanna scratch it with my tongs. I just kind of mash it up in between the tongs. You sh really shouldn't need a lot of effort to get this pork to break up. And then I'm mixing in all of the bitties underneath. And that's why you want a nice fatty piece of pork for this, because then it won't dry out, right? I think I'm good with that. I usually like a chunkier, pulled pork than everything being mushed together 
And holy, it just got really hot in here. <laughs> this was at 450 in the oven. Okay, just gonna take a fork, give this a try. Might need some salt. Mmm. We don't need salt even. What the heck even is this? It's like other than the carnitas I've had working at the taqueria being taught by like little old Mexican ladies. The carnitas that you get in most restaurants is not this at all. Like I've never had a carnitas that tastes like this. Doesn't even need sauce, no. Oh man, that is just like melting your mouth good. None of the flavorings really overpower each other. I think the pork really comes forward with this one is that's the star. Give me 30 seconds guys. Just gonna go wake up the bear. Get him, get, get him ready for lunch here. Somehow fell asleep. Oh, that's new. Is it as good as Taco Bell? Not a chance. He wakes up, first words out of his mouth. Is it almost burrito time? <laughs> yeah, so glad that there isn't smell-o-vision. Okay, put this to the side. I'm gonna switch this up a sec. Mm. Not too sweet. Alistair, that's what you're making in the crock pot for taquitos? Deadly. Some pork carnitas? Of course this isn't as good as Taco Bell. Duh. Love it, Norges. Yeah, we're not old without teeth yet. We need some crunch and bitey bite. See? There's definitely a good amount of like leftover pork. That'll be good on many, many things. I could see that being great on rice. Okay. I think it makes more sense to do two burritos side by side. I'm gonna assume that Sam wants everything in his. Oh, a very faint yeah in the background. Our grill pan is also warmed. So let's start with some beans. Homemade refried beans. There we go. So we use pinto beans, added a bunch of very tasty ingredients to them. And I think that is way better than anything we can get in this store. So important thing with burritos, that's probably way too much beans anyways already. <laughs> get back in there. 
There we go. So we just want to spread out the fillings to the size of burrito we're gonna roll. So try and keep everything centered as well. These beans have character. Yeah, they do. Not for you, Nike. Oh, you want more. Yeah, you want more frijoles. Look at our Mexi rice. Give this a little stir. Mmm, smells really good. Yeah, beans and pork, right? Fluff this up. There's no stick into the bottom of the pot. That's my perfect rice recipe. That's our next filler. So that usually always complements the, the refried beans, right? So I usually pair those together. the lid back on that so it doesn't dry out yeah yeah lots of people ask me Kate why don't you have a rice cooker because I find it just as easy to cook the rice on the stove top okay now we pork now we pork carnitas it up that's where most of our weight's gonna come from in the burrito right <laughs> one pound burrito coming up if it doesn't weigh a pound you did something wrong this one's turning into Sammy's that's for sure his and yeah I was gonna say that cookie so this will beat Chipotle any day well number one everything's made fresh it's not been sitting in a steam table for hours since they first opened i know oh man a teleporter norges imagine okay just give a little stir of our limed cabbage this is definitely going to add some crunch to the burrito as well as very beautiful colors So nice. Hey, Trey, welcome in. Feels like it's been forever. should have put the cheese kind of with the meat and rice and beans so I'll just put it on the side here should be like a touch of residual oh, melt yeah. oh Lee he is alive what is going on over there thank you oh, Sammy yeah. so this is a smoked cheddar guys our homemade smoked cheddar Time to fill the onion bag. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Couple things from the fridge. Our pico de gallo. I know we cheated. We didn't make that one today, but it is honestly so easy to make on your own. Welcome in, new subs. And I would say out of like everything that should be made fresh, it's this. Will we be able to close the burrito? No, we won't. <laughs> shall we? Yes, we shall. Bam. 
But wait, there's more. Oh, yeah. The guac. It looks too good to eat? That's not possible. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Once you pick it up, you're not putting it down. This is enough for like three meals in one. Look at the avos like tumbling down the carnitas mountain. Sam's actually really great at rolling. I love how we just like took that over. Oh, you're going for the open end? That one was supposed to be for you. It's okay. Are you growing it? Oh, we're growing it. Sorry, 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 sorry. Karna, and thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Yeah, go, go, go. Oh, we're grilling it? Yeah, we need a re-roll, please. We got the grill ready. The tortilla is just an art palette. <laughs> it fits. I don't know about this one. That's why you get the XL, guys. Leave one open for the picture. I want to do like the half. It really helps having all the fillings warm. It makes the tortilla more pliable. Okay. Let's go over here. Our grill pan's hot. I'm just gonna give it a spray because I find that flour tortillas kind of like to stick sometimes on the grill. So let's avoid any mishaps at this point because we have come way too far for that to happen. Sammy is so good. You've made your fair share of burritos or wraps, hey? He's worked at some restaurants where they have that on the menu. Pro. So this shouldn't take long. I like to start with the seam side down and we kind of sew it shut that way. And just give it a little press. Oh, Sammy, I made a little beverage. If you would like it. What did you think? Tasty. Yeah, very simple little refreshing, very refreshing. beverage. Yep. Okay, let's check our seam. So I know this thing's pretty rocking hot. Oh, beautiful. I'm actually gonna flip it over a bit more. If you need to use the other burrito to prop it up. So we should be able to get those marks kind of all the way around if you want to. So surprised. I am honestly in shock that they closed. Yeah. I kind of made that impossible, or I tried to. Nothing gets past the Sammy man. Love those grill marks. The beans. I'm gonna be snacking on those for sure, just on their own. Okay, slide it again. Thank you. Yeah, I think they turned out so good. Relic is stocking up for the week. I'll take three burritos and six of the beverages, please. <laughs> Are you having a party? <laughs> okay, this should be our kind of final little grill. The crazy thing is that we have makings for a lot more. Yeah, such a good meal prep item for sure.
We are officially calling them Fatteritos. I love it. You're gonna make your taquitos with grilled onions and fresh cilantro with Spanish rice on the side. Yummy. Sounds so good. One hot Rito coming on up. That's a hot fatterito. <laughs> you guys keep asking if I made my own shells. It's like you just expect it or something. I did not today. Actually, can you please grab the scale? Because we said it's not a fatterito if it doesn't weigh a pound. Okay. 18.5 ounces. 18.5 ounces? Yeah. One pound, five ounces. It's an 18, right, 20 ounces. <laughs> Impressed. Yeah, time for the weigh-in. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go for the cut. I would recommend serrated knife for this. We didn't put sour cream. It's the only thing we kind of missed. But I'm thinking that everything else is cooked good enough that we don't really need it. Not the bias? No. Who cuts burritos on a bias? So many colors, and that's what I would love to see in all burritos. Even the cheese melted. The heck? We got our refried beans, rice, pork carnitas, smoked cheddar, limed cabbage, pico de gallo, guacamole. Good to go. Hey, Heat, good to see you. Yeah, should I just like plate it like this? Which side's better? I think that little side. That's the shot. Yeah, please shift to Wyoming. If only it was that easy. Yeah, is this a sushi Rito? Doggo says yes. That's actually the best burrito that I think I've ever made. Especially the fact that it's all staying together. Sam's just eating it, so that's also a great sign. Yeah, if the sushi is pork, then yes. Okay. Cheers, friends. I'm going in. Jason Games, thank you for the follow. I'm gonna do pork side. Carnitas on the ground. Mmm. Fatty pork. I got the little bit of crunch of cabbage. Good flavor in the beans and rice. Very authentic, I would say. I love the cabbage in there. It really brightens everything up and doesn't make it feel as heavy. See how the smoked cheddar is. Mmm. Just 
smoked cheese out of this world. I got a little too much hot sauce lately. <laughs> so it hurts. His bum is too sore for hot sauce. I'm sorry, friends. Yeah, I mean, I would always go for cabbage rather than the lettuce of it. Yeah, there's a limit. <laughs> he did it. Because, yeah, spicing this up would be so good. This is so tasty, guys. I was craving this. Burrito. Mmm. Yeah, lettuce and burritos, pointless. Holy shit, cookie. So easy. <laughs> Tago. You should do it. I mean, it did take me a bit of time. You can save time by buying canned pinto beans instead of cooking it from dried, but I think it tastes better dried. It didn't take us five hours though, that's for sure. I mean, the longest process is definitely the pork carnitas. It's a bit dewy in here. Like, oh, God. <laughs> Sam's loving it. Oh no! Ah! Hi, Papa! Oh, can I have a kiss? No, oh, not the Rito. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> we gotta get her out. She's wild. wild. Oh my God. Norges, we don't have time for this. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Norges. Holy. Oh my God, you guys, we're over 300 yeah. subs. What? This is a first. A hundred? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Norges is seriously the true MVP. What the oh, hell, dude? Yeah. This guy is a legend. Oh, Norges. I honestly hope that we can cook for you one day. Oh, yeah. Welcome in, guys. Fire all of them. Yeah, get the guns out. Fire them up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna be oh yang for forever. Holy man, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, it is, yeah. that's been a goal of mine for quite a while now. We've been working towards that for a few months. So thank you so much. Welcome oh, in yeah. everyone. You got your golden box now. <laughs> So just going, actually, it should say how many subs you've given out. 500. Nordis has given out 500 subs in the channel since the stream has started over two years. Okay, I am going to do that for now. Who does that? Oh, just Norge's store. He's our favorite Norwegian that watches the stream, comes in every now and then. He actually has won a past giveaway that we've done and I sent him a cast iron cookbook that he's been cooking out of. So yeah, he's definitely into food. Yeah, best person ever. Amazing. I'm in shock still. Thanks, Carla. Yeah, it's always great having you. Yeah, generous dude right there. I'm getting so sweaty that I can't even hold the mouse right now. <laughs> Thanks, friends. She's getting emotional. Yeah, I'm getting emotional. Okay, so yes, we are wrapping things up. Thank you so much, Norges. So we would have had alerts for probably a good like hour from that. A hundred gifted subs, insane. If there's anything that we can do for you, man, let me know, please. Cause yeah, you deserve it too. 
is we all work together, right? Thank you, Boothie, for the follow. All right, so Tex-Mex went down today. Everything turned out. Everything went great. It tastes delicious. A good improvement from yesterday's stream, although maybe we didn't learn as much as we learned yesterday, right? So tomorrow is Mother's Day and we have a delicious menu planned. I'm actually gonna be right back. I'm gonna go grab that piece of meat we're gonna be cutting into. Hold tight. This one. So we're gonna be cutting steaks tomorrow out of this beef strip loin. If you guys have ever wondered, oh, I wonder how they cut the steaks and how you can trim up a strip loin and make your own steaks. Tomorrow is the day this was on sale. So this entire piece of meat only cost 121 Canadian. I mean, there's some times that you can go to a steakhouse and pay that for one steak. And as you can see, Canada Sterling Silver, this is some of the premium beef that we get here. Most of it comes from Alberta. That's where I grew up. So we know the good beef. What's the weight on this? So 5.5 kilos. It is a bit thin. But that doesn't mean anything. That just means we'll be cutting the steaks a bit thicker. So if you guys wanna see how to trim up something like this and save yourself so much money buying beef, cause for us that is so expensive here, buy whole cuts like this and do what I show you. You will thank me later. Yeah, who's your steak guy? I could have got that for 120. <laughs> you can get 10 steaks out of this. Yeah, we should, hey? And then after that, so we'll be grilling them on the big green egg, so charcoal grilled steaks. Other things on the menu. I thought I would keep it like really traditional. Garlic Asiago potato wedges tomorrow. We're gonna roast up some rutabaga, make some homemade ranch dip for those dishes. And then my mom used 50,000 of her channel points on Twitch to request lemon meringue bars for dessert. So that's what's going down tomorrow, guys. We have grandma and grandpa coming over for dinner too. It's gonna be a good stream. Uncle Meow, thank you for the follow. Can you actually cook it medium rare or will Canadian authorities raid you? No, we can do whatever we want. And we are now allowed to cook burgers to temp as long as the restaurant whatever you want to call it is grinding their meat fresh every day so we are making improvements there with that all right guys so stream will be starting at the same time as always i know i was a bit late today i'm sorry but i had some wedding dress things so 11 a.m pacific time tomorrow see you guys then who are we gonna go raid? Who should we go spread the love to? <laughs> yeah, you better be on time. <laughs> I feel like I have burritos all in my mouth. You want a sushi raid? A sushi sushi? Oh my gosh, ginger beef, I'm sold, I'm in. Okay, sounds perfect. Good one, Kev. Okay, friends, I hope you all have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are. Thank you so much for everything today. Oh man, Norges. That's, you just get that every time you do that to us. Just an oh man. Lots of biddies as well. So guys, we also crushed our bit goal today. 
thank you very much for that. I cannot wait to show you guys the trivet when it comes in. Sushi dig. Is that a brisket? Nope, that's our strip loin that we're gonna be showing you guys how to cut into steaks tomorrow on stream. Okay, I'm hitting this button. Get ready. Let's go see Allison and Sun. See what kind of shenanigans they're up to. Always good times in that channel. Slap that meat, Sammy. He's snacking on the carnitas. Can't blame him though. Okay, bye guys. Take care, stay healthy, stay safe. And we will see you tomorrow. Love you all.